Hey, we're going to have some fun. We're going to keep classifying, categorizing our statements, except this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. This time you're going to create truth tables for some statements that I give you, and you're going to figure out what category they belong in. Okay, so I'm going to give you a series of statements, and for each one you're going to do the following. You're going to symbolically represent that statement using operators and individual letters to represent simple statements. You're going to then uh, determine how many unique letters you see in that symbolized statement. And you're going to use that number in L equals 2 to the N to determine how many lines you need to draw beneath your symbolized statement. And then you're going to go back to that number you got with L equals 2 to the N and you're going to divide it by 2. And that's going to tell you how many T's followed by how many F's to put underneath the left hand most letter in your truth table. And you're going to keep dividing that number by 2 as you move from left to right in your truth table table filling in values for your simple statements. And once you've got all of those truth values determined, then you're going to calculate the truth values for any operators that you see in your sentence. Okay. And then the really fun part begins. Okay. Then you're going to look at the main operator for your statement. You're going to look at that column of truth values underneath the main operator. And you're looking for patterns. Okay. You're looking on each line of the truth table trying to identify a pattern. If when you look at that column of truth values underneath the main operator of the statement, you see that every line has the main operator true, then that statement belongs in the tautology category. A tautologist statement is one with a main operator that is always true. It is never false. A tautology is a kind of statement that makes sense. Okay. If, on the other hand, you look at that column of operators underneath the main operator and you see that sometimes they're true and on some lines that operator is false, then we have what's called a contingent statement. A contingent statement is one where whether or not the statement is true kind of depends on, that's what contingent means, it depends depends on what line in the truth table you look at. In other words, it depends on the values of the simple propositions that make up the compound proposition, whether or not it's true or it's false. A contingent statement is also a statement that makes sense. It's possible for them to be true because at least on one line, it's going to have a value of true underneath the main operator. And the third category that you're going to be putting statements in is the category we looked at in the last lecture, the self-contradictory category, right? A self-contradictory statement is one in which it is false on every single line of the truth table underneath the main operator. This is a statement that's never true, and as a consequence, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so here are your four statements. First, either we're all doing logic or we're not all doing logic. Second, Pat is dating Sydney and Pat is not dating Sydney. Third, either you are a religious person or you are an immoral person. And lastly, if you want a good grade for this class, then you have to complete all your thought primers. Okay, so take advantage of this opportunity to practice creating these truth tables. It's kind of fun. See what you discover. See what category you want to put each one of these statements in. So go ahead and pause your video, create your truth tables, and you're, when, you're, when you're ready to check your work, go ahead and restart your video. You had to have had some fun doing that, right? I think truth tables are a blast. They're so interesting to look at and see what they reveal. Okay, your first statement. This has a truth value of true underneath this wedge here, okay? And that tells us that this is a tautologist statement. This truth table has two lines because we have only one letter comprising our compound proposition, and two to the one equals two. So we have two lines. And on both lines, this statement is true. So that means this statement can never be false. This is a statement like it's either raining outside or it's not raining outside, right? That's another tautology. That statement is always true because it's always either raining or not raining at any given moment in time, depending on our definition of raining. All right. So the first statement was a tautology. The second statement looks different, though. In this statement, again, we have just two lines in our truth table. And on both lines underneath the main operator, the statement is false. This statement can never be true. And again, it kind of makes sense, right? Either Pat is dating Sydney or Pat is not dating Sydney. So it can't be the case that Pat is dating and not dating Sydney. All right. So this tells us this statement is self-contradictory. It makes no sense. Um, it can never be true. Either you're a religious person or you're an immoral person. Okay. So hopefully you phrased um, your statement, you are a moral person in the affirmative, and then used tilde to negate it. That's the best practice. And when we look at this truth table, we see something we didn't see in the previous truth tables. And that is we see that on some lines it's true, and on some lines, in particular the third line, this statement is false. Okay, And that means that this statement is a contingent statement. Whether or not it's true or false is contingent on what the truth values are of the component uh, 
elements of this compound proposition, the components of it. When some of them are false, the statement is false. Other times, some of them can be false and the statement's still true. So what the values are and what the combinations are is going to determine what the value of the main operator is, and therefore this statement is contingent. Finally, we have our last statement. Uh, we have it represented as a horseshoe, and we see something similar in this truth table that we saw in the previous one, and that is sometimes this statement is true, like on ones, lines 1, 3, and 4, and on line 2, this statement is false. So whether or not this statement is true or false is contingent on the values of the individual statements that make up the compound proposition. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. I think this is so much fun. You're going to do great. It's going to get really interesting when we start to compare statements and then eventually evaluate arguments for validity using these kinds of truth tables.